Swiss government, so, so that's theirs. And I was uh, working on this as myself. Uh, none of this work was sponsored by any of my employers, past or present. I had to say that. Mm -hmm. Ooh, sound. Can we uh, do it again? <laughs> okay, there we go. You do it one more time. Sorry about that. When I read the, the paper, I thought that the title should have been changed into uh, Ron is wrong uh, and uh, Wit is right and the NSA is happy. <laughs> <laughs> so what we did was um, about, about three years ago, I uh, had, a, had a little contest where I asked Arian uh, if, if he did a GCD calculation, whether he would find anything. And he bet me... If he found one, he would buy me dinner. So what we're going to talk about today is what we collected, what we didn't collect specifically, because th there are two teams that did this, um, and we collected different, different stuff. Uh, what was computed? What were the results? We want to discuss it because we focused very much on key generation, not the usage, the key generation, and the conclusions that we came to, which, which we understand is a little controversial. So what we collected was openly accessible public keys that were, that were in repositories. We did not do any sniffing, any crawling. We didn't do any of that because the Swiss don't do that. <laughs> okay, that's what I was told. And so we used the uh, MIT PGP uh, key server, uh, the EFF SSL repository, and we didn't crawl the net. Uh, we ended up with 11.7 million public keys that contained 6.4 million distinct RSA moduli. Um, how many people know how RSA works? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, 3.2 3 million Elgamal keys, 3.2 million DSA keys, and we didn't use SSL, we didn't do SSL, so we don't have the SSL ECDC, but in the, in, actually in the uh, MIT PGP database, there is one ECDSA key, um, only one. And we knew, obviously know about the Debian vulnerability, in the Debian vulnerability, there was a bad random number generator. We kept the factors from all of those, uh, those keys, but we threw their existence out of the statistics. So those, those keys were all removed. Now, there are two major results. One was duplicates. The other one was GCDs. The duplicates, in a duplicate where two people, for some reason, share the same private key, also share the same, I'm sorry, Two people that share the same public key obviously share the same private key. And in both Elgamal and DSA and RSA, we found those. Uh, we found a few duplicates with seemingly unrelated owners. You know, you don't know. You really don't know. And in RSA, um, we found 270,000 keys that share the same modules, duplicates. Now, the vast majority of these duplicates were, were uh, re-signing, where you would sign the same key over and over again, possibly for different purposes, like websites with different names. Um, I'm a little miffed as to why that would be a smart thing to do. Um, the keys that were reused, one of them was reused 16,000 times. That would be a bad day if that key needed to be um, um, revoked. Um, and this was hard to do. How do you determine, you get two certificates. You can look at the certificates, they're different owners, but how do you know if they're unrelated or not? If they, are, do these people know each other? We did find one PGP key, and we tried to contact the owner um, of both keys, and we contacted one. And that person was not happy, um, because they told us that these keys were not intended to be related and were not related. And we tried to find the software that to, to, to do that to, so we could analyze the software ourselves. We were unable to recover the software. So we, couldn't, we actually couldn't uh, go any farther. And that, that was one of the biggest problems is how do you, in, in, in a conference like this, you, you want to produce a result. Why did this happen? Well, it's going to take an archaeologist to find out why this happened because you can't find the stuff. 
So what we computed was the GCD of all the, all the moduli, the distinct moduli. Uh, we threw, uh, threw out all the duplicates. We, we counted the duplicates, but we, did, we didn't, we didn't uh, allow squares into the, into the tree. Um, basically, you uh, create a tree where, where you do a pairwise GCD, and if there's nothing in there, if the GCD is one, you multiply the two numbers together and it go up to the next step. If you multiply them together and you recover a prime, how do you know if it's a prime? It's 512 bits long. All the numbers that went in were 1,000-bit keys. If a number that pops out that's 512 bits, it's a prime. It's a factor. You've recovered a factor. Normally, we get these. Uh, sometimes we got these, and a very few times we got composites out of the GCD. And when we got the composites out, we just backtracked. Uh, it occurred about 100 times in the entire data set. It wasn't a big deal. Um, and we used, uh, uh, we used the tools that we used with simple GNU multi-precision ar arithmetic library. Uh, it has low memory uh, requirements, and the effort was completely subquadratic. The final integers, we were very lucky. Um, uh, the other team, Nadia Henninger's team, they went over two to the 32 bytes in length and ran into a software bug. We didn't. Um, and, and the result, for 10 million moduli, the final uh, uh, GCD took two to three hours on a MacBook. So it wasn't a, a really, um, no, it wasn't very hard. So let me explain how we did the tree. Uh, these A and B, C and D uh, are, are factors. The GCD of that is one, right? Uh, then we multiply them together and they go up. Uh, notice that A is here. Multiply that, uh, the GCD is one, move them up. Now you do the GCD of these two numbers, out pops A. That's a good thing. Multiply it together, removing the extra A, so there's no A squared up here, and now you have that number. On this side, you start with, oh, there's a duplicate, so A, B there, A, B there. We just throw it out, okay? We, we throw it out of the tree. We, we count it as a duplicate. And then uh, this is no, no collision, so it goes up. This is fine, goes up. This is fine, goes up. But now you notice that um, D, which is there, and E, which is there, and D, which is there, and E, which is there, uh, they made it up into this top, and now you get a composite, and then you have to backtrack. And it's not hard. What happens is we take that result and turn it into a graph. The graph is this is a prime, this is a prime, this is a moduli. So P, Q happened once, okay? Uh, D and H and D created one public key. Uh, D and C created another public key. So this is, so the fact is, is that because of this, this, the secrecy of this moduli was lost. Uh, and this, this down here was A, B happened twice. So the, num the, line, the number on the line represents the number of keys that were found of a particular uh, uh, moduli. Um, so we, we throw away the things that we can't recover the keys from, and they ended up with what we called three clusters. These clusters, uh, um, uh, um, three clusters, where, where this is one, one cluster. Now, what I'm going to explain is uh, um, uh, three samples of clusters and, 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 and what happened and, and why. Um, so we, we, we recovered 19,000 moduli. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. The factors of 12,000, 13,000 public keys were recovered. And it turns out 5,000 of these public keys used SHA-1s and were not expired. They were, they were current keys. Um, and one of, the side, one of the more stranger things, we recovered 10 different factor, factors for 10 2,000-bit RSA numbers, um, which was surprised. The early conclusion was there were clearly multiple vendors involved. The, we'll show you the graphs of, the th of, of, three, of the, three of the vendors, um, and each cluster was the same vendor. There was no, there was no situation where two vendors were entangled with each other. Um, and none of these keys were from common e-commerce common e sites, so, so R RSA is a, a great tool. Uh, and there are multiple causes, the first prime, the K9, uh, which I love, and the chain. Um, uh, let me move on here. So the most common failure, which was one vendor uh, we contacted, the vendor and, and asked them if they would like some help solving this problem, and they never took us up on it. So um, Nadia and her team um, actually came up with a very uh, impressive result of probably why it happened, uh, with, 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 in my mind, 100% probable of why it happened. 
And what happened was they, they went and got the first prime, and then after they uh, accumulated some entry, went and got the second prime. And so this is a case which is 5,321 X509 certificates, okay, that only used 4,000 primes, 4,600 primes. So this, 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 this is the number of the prime in the database, this is the number of the prime in the database, and there was one at this combination, but this combination had 51, and, and uh, you, you, you get the picture. The one that was just wonderful was the K9. Uh, 687 keys from nine primes. And, and n nothing coming in and out, right? There, there, there isn't, there isn't uh, it's not larger. Um, uh, it's been reported that this was IBM. Um, we tried to contact IBM and failed. Nadia contacted IBM and succeeded. And they found it, it's a bug, so. Hence the discussion coming up. Um, chains are really hard. Turns out these are 1,000-bit keys. Um, and these are 512-bit keys. So the, these 1,000-bit keys are, are fine, um, and uh, they're valid, and all of these wonderful things. This represents, let's say this is Alice, and this is Bob, right? They're happy. They're just, life is great. Everything's going fine. And then this person comes along and ruins everything for both of them, all three of them, okay? There's nothing you can do about it because you don't know that they're gonna come along and, and do that. And again, these chains were always one vendor and they were always chains, they were never, some of these you would have duplicates in the middle here and I don't know why the duplicates always occurred in the middle. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's hard. Okay. I'll let you read that. The problem is randomness is you can never be sure. Um, but bad random number generators always have always happened. This is not the first, and this is not the last. This is going to be a pretty much if it's not the crypto community, because the crypto community says that this, this, the, the, the proof says the number has random. So if your number's not random, the proof doesn't hold, so go away, right? But in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the real world, it's pretty bad. And the security people will be looking at this for a very long time. So, so basically, this is not the first or the last. And the conclusion out of the paper wasn't that RSA is broken or, or anything, it was that generating keys, that's first, in the real world, where random number generators may or may not be good, and you know you really don't know, is significantly riskier than single secrets such as El Gamal DSA, which is based on Diffie-Hellman, hence the title. Um, and the title was sensational, and I, I don't, that's good. Um, <laughs> duplicate keys occur in both, and I don't know why, but they do. And, and, but the fact is, they're only vulnerable to each other. RSA, RSA is the only algorithm with the feature that if you half of your keys collide, you both of you have lost your privacy completely to everybody. You're not pairwise vulnerable, you're completely vulnerable. So we came up with, of course, we, we wanted to, let's fix it, let's put a website up that says, let's do GCD testing. And, and then we thought we were gonna get into the same situation as with this unfortunate person in Germany that was not really happy um, so let's assume Alice creates a key, 10 years pass. Underneath that key is all of her secrets. Okay, maybe they're timestamps of, 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 of contracts and all kinds of wonderful things. Uh, Bob creates a key, testing detects a collision, and Alice was an innocent bystander, right? There's nothing you can do for Alice. She's toast. Um, so we thought about that, and, and notifying, notifying the person that creates the new key, that's easy. Notifying the innocent bystander, that's hard. What happens if they don't exist anymore? They, their email address doesn't work anymore, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. How do you let them know? Um, so so we, didn't, we decided not to do the GCD testing. Um, another item, 
that uh, we, we'd been contacted about other people of doing GCD testing. And we found out that half of the public keys that are signed by a certificate authority are not public. But let me try to, there were too many publics in that sentence. Um, if I get my, my, my public key signed and certified, I might not put it on a website that's public. I may use it only behind my firewall. I may use, it pri I may use this public key privately. And so you don't, you, you actually, this kind of um, system where, where you, you do all of the GCDs, you don't have all of the public keys, okay? And are you gonna trust giving all of your public keys to someone else so that one central authority has the entire world's public keys? That's a little scary. So that's, that's the challenge with GCD testing. So again, discussion. Diffie-Hellman and RSA, duplicate keys are possible. They're detectable with a simple compare, right? Did I, did I share the private keys? Yes, because I share the public keys. A simple compare, simple database, no problem, no calculation necessary. And the consequence is fairly, fairly small. It's pairwise, smaller. If there's a shared factor, this does not happen in Diffie-Hellman. This happens in, in RSA. Um, and so that's, that's just the fact. But as a, as a practitioner, if any of these three things happen, you should probably go and revoke all the keys ever generated by that random number generator. Now that's gonna be a, a, a bitter pill for anybody, anybody to, uh, to swallow. Okay? So, in conclusion, uh, we collected 11.7 million public keys. Most of them work as advertised. Uh, which is the abstract of the paper, recovered tens of ten, ten, uh, more than 10,000 private keys, quality random number generators are critical, and the GCD vulnerability is unique for RSA. Things like ECDSA are a safe alternative. Um, thank you. <laughs>